Hello and welcome to Elite CISO's weekly podcast, where we bring industry experts to talk about different cybersecurity topics. Uh, today we have Mr. Nitin Bhatnagar, Associate Director, PCI Security Standard Council. Welcome to the show, uh, Nitin. Let's start with your quick introduction. Thank you, thank you, Vikas. Thanks, thanks for having me. Great. So. Uh, let, let's talk about your role in PCI security. I mean, uh, you are associate director over there. So let's talk about what role do you play and is your role uh, India specific? Is it Asia Pacific specific or it's a global role? So let's, let's hear from you on that. Sure. So, uh, so my, uh, so I think, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. I think uh, my role with PCI security standard council, I think is largely to uh, in India, specifically I'm based out of India. So my uh, focus primarily is uh, is India and uh, my role entails creating education and awareness around the payment data security standards and uh, and you know try to get more involvement from the industry in order to make the PCI data security standards more robust and effective and intentionally I mean ideally you know the point here is that we want the Indian stakeholders from the payment card industry to influence the standards by getting involved with the PCI Council mm -hmm. and uh, having this uh, standards more effective and robust so that you know people uh, the industry can make best use of it because as we all know that industries uh, industry payment card industry in India has been evolving very drastically uh, when it comes to the digital payments uh, I think the in the in the both value and volumes the payments have been growing uh, which gives uh, PCI Security Standard Council uh, uh, an option or probably a priority for us to look at the market and, and you know start gathering the feedback so that we can influence these standards. Makes sense, makes sense. As you said that, okay, a lot of digital payments are happening in India. There's a push for digital India, a lot of e-payments, mobile payments, app payments are happening, right? And we yeah. kind of keep hearing about data breaches, right? So uh, if you talk about US, uh, we hear a lot about uh, payment card data being leaked and now it's happening in India as well. So when we talk about the data leak landscape, let's say, or a breach landscape. So how different is India's breach landscape if we compared with, let's say, US or European uh, markets? Sure. So, uh, so I think in, in recent years, you know, uh, we have seen the incidents of data breaches and cyber attacks mm -hmm. have risen not only in India, but around the around the world and right. I think cyber criminals made the situation worse uh, you know by exploiting the vulnerabilities for the remote workers during the COVID-19 pandemic and we all know about that right mm -hmm. and uh, the cyber criminals use various modes of attacks uh, to breach the data of any organization you know starting from malware attacks to the ransomware which is very common today and uh, you know and the most common is the, is the phishing and the wishing right? right social engineering to the distributed denial of uh, service attacks you know and recently, the cross-site scripting and a man-in-the-middle attacks uh, have also gained prominence. Uh, talking about last year in 2020, the XSS attacks accounted for approximately 40% of all the data breaches worldwide. Wow. So, so you can see the the, the situation, you know. Um, and uh, while these attacks are not new, I would also just bring uh, across for the audience perspective: the cyber criminals have been using our changing circumstances to their advantage at this point. And for instance, remote workers, which we just uh, talked working on the unsecured connections were the easy targets due to organizations having more quickly to work from home environment and i think the cyber criminals capitalized on this window and they have started attacking remote workers and at the same time exploited the covid 19 support messages uh, to uh, conduct the cyber attacks now industry reports also suggest the weak passwords insecure remote access and unpatched systems and applications are the top three root causes for the data breaches and in a nutshell i would just want to highlight the the idea here is that if you keep your basics hygiene in tech uh, these attacks can be prevented and you know avoided and i think these are the three things weak passwords insecure remote access and unpatched systems and applications if you're able to fix them things can be real easy for all Right. So what, what we are saying is that we are putting the onus on the end user, right? So you keep your strong password, you do the patching and all. But I think when we talk about breaches, the impact is much larger and we have more uh, stakeholders, you know, in the game. So uh, the, the standard bodies like PCI, the CIOs and CISOs, the end users, the banks. And, and what about government? 
right even government has got a skin in the game and they have a policy mandate right because without government without defining the policies if we just leave the end user uh, alone that you are responsible for keeping you know your system updated and all i don't think we will solve this problem so uh, talking specifically about government right what role government has to play in this overall uh, data breach landscape or controlling it or defining the standards what's your view on that see i think in in you know till the time since i have taken up this role in last two and a half years i think i'm going to close to complete my three years now in in september uh, this year uh, but the government around the world has been been talking about digital payments and data security and uh, it, which is increasingly seriously by putting it high up to the agenda and implementing new security standards and protocols talking about india uh, while you know i will just repeat that you know we are part of becoming a world leader in digital payments it has all also been a country that is attractive target for cyber criminals over the last few years mm-hmm. so uh, it is therefore critical that the industry and relevant authorities and the government work together to make the payment infrastructure stronger and improve the security of sensitive data which is very very critical now i think incre- and you know increasingly you know what we have seen in the country is that uh, you know the introduction the recent introduction of the master direction circular for the digital payment security in india by rbi i think provided an essential guidance or uh, the guidelines for the regulated entities to set up the robust governance structure and uh, implement common minimum standard of security controls for digital payments and the products and services now uh, this circular uh, mandated the adoption or probably referenced the pci security standards for all organizations that are accepting transmitting and processing any uh, any uh, payment card data to strengthen the the digital payment ecosystem so if you have seen you know i think uh, you know we have been uh, we, we we have been doing various events in the country and i think the pci security standards uh, has been coming up with the india forum then we did this year security summit and i think and one of the key thing that i just wanted to highlight is that um, uh, you know the you know all the forums you know when we have seen the representatives coming in from the rbi or from the national cyber security coordinator office which is uh, from the pmo office they all have reference the pci pci security standards for securing the payment infrastructure and uh, and i think uh, we need the collaboration Absolutely. both domestically and globally so okay. it is hugely important if we are able to tackle the growing threat and make data security practice fundamentals element of day to day business activities and i think that's very very important getting employees trained on the standards on the pci security standards and improving on the cyber hygiene will help the organization take the step in the right direction in protecting the if i'm talking about the payment data right, right? and while uh, the organizations are open they can come up they can join pci and they can influence the standards see it's all in the stakeholders hand today it's it's something you know that stakeholders have to start thinking security as one of the key elements uh, as one of the key element you know while they start uh, implementing them you know within their organization i think uh, security by design i think should be something that has to be started following followed uh, by the stakeholders from the payment card industry stakeholders absolutely absolutely makes sense so <clears throat> so when when you say that okay uh, there are there are mandates from rbi there are standards available now you know with all the digital revolution that india is going through we are like topping all the digital payment transactions and all um, in in this scenario it is a very lucrative area for hackers as well right because everybody has got a mobile phone in their hand and they are making all the upi payments and also india is one of the most attacked country right most attacked uh, country from a cyber perspective now in this scenario how does pci standard helps organizations uh you know financial institutes to improve their security now before before you answer this right let me let me put a, a pinch of salt over here so pci came i think in 2004 if i am correct the first standard came in 2004 and then since then lot of new stand lot of you know variations have come organizations have adopted pci uh but when a breach happens right so let's say one organization suffers a breach when you investigate the the organization is very well mature in their cyber posture they have got iso 27001 they have got pci standard also implemented right in this scenario how does standard helps right uh, uh, i would like to hear your honest opinion on that no no worries but before before that just let me uh, i think the pci security standard council was formed in 2006 and i think uh, where that's where the 
initially the initially all the payment brands like visa mastercard amex jcb discover they all had their own individual standards right, right and then lately they came together and they formed the pci security standard council and mm. that's where the first standard which is pci ds's version uh, 1.0 that came into the existence and that's how the evolution of the standards happened and today uh, pci ds is is, is uh, we have 15 data security standards today that helps protect the payment data for the entire payment card ecosystem mm -hmm. Now, having talked about how the standards are helping, I think uh, just to give you an insight on the PCI SSC develops the security standards and 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 guidance to help businesses keep their payment data safe. While the standards are global, True. the involvement of the PCI participating organization in the development of the standards is vitally important to ensure these standards account for regional nuances. True. True. Right now. Now the PCI SSC POs can provide feedback on standards mm -hmm. uh, and uh, participate in these special interest groups that we have. Uh, we have run for the board of advisors uh, from, and, and I think one of the board of advisors that we have in, from India is the NPCA, which is National Payment Corporation of India. All of which have an important role uh, at the end of the day in improving the payment security worldwide as well as in India. Now PCI SSC also helps organization make the most of the new technology by providing guidance and developing standards on some of the latest payment methods and, tech and channels. This includes our PCI contactless payments on cards, a solution which help enable the contactless payments acceptance using NFC technology and point-to-point -point encryption solution. Mm -hmm. So to properly tap into the growth potential of the digital payment methods, businesses need to ensure that they are using uh, these emerging payment channels accordingly. So, however, the latest standards alone, uh, alone are not enough, you know, that's what, uh, and we also need to bridge the gap of the skilled payment security professionals in the country. True, very true. And in order to ensure, in order to ensure that the latest standards have been properly implemented, this can only be done by engaging industry training programs, including our PCI professional qualification, as well as reading the latest material on how to properly implement and assess the PCI standards. Now, when organizations build security into their fundamental business processes, it puts them in a better position to deal with rapidly changing threats of cybercrime and enables them to adopt the newer payment technology more securely. Now, the standards as a role, you know, what our role is, I think it's very important for everyone to understand here, uh, is that PCI Security Standard Council uh, develops the PCI standards. We manage these standards. True. We make sure that these standards are being, being up to date for the current situation or the current new technologies that we are into, right? And and, and we are we're gonna talk about you know we'll talk about you know DSS 4.0, which is going to come next year. But having said that the compliance is something is driven by the payment networks. Right. Now each payment brand heads its own compliance program. Mm -hmm. Right. So so when for example, uh, you know uh, you know uh, the uh, any compliance, you know, for example, PCI DSS standard has to be followed by uh, the, uh, the, uh, by their clients or their respective, uh, you know, users. So they have to, they have a compliance program in place, which, which is, be, has to be followed by the entities. We uh, really do not get into the compliance or any specific areas when it comes to, uh, uh, to the uh, issues, which comes up probably, you know, when you talk about data breach, these are the areas which completely gets into the uh, bucket of the payment networks. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, we make sure, based on the threat landscape that we see globally, we make sure that these standards are updated, upgraded, and, and make sure that, you know, the stakeholders are implementing them with the right intent. Right. Let, let, me, let me ask a little tough question on this one, right? So, PCI's role is that, okay, we set the standard, we look at the market, how it's behaving, you know, what kind of latest threats and breaches are happening, and then you set your standard accordingly. Yeah. Length of password. Right. I'm not sure what is the current step, current, what the current standard says, but I think a couple of years back, it was like eight characters and eight character password. My daughter can break right with her regular computer. So what, what's the gap? Is, is it, is it, I'm what, what's the length right now from the password? Yeah. Uh, no, I think, see, you need to, that's it. I'm saying you need to wait the, the major change to the standard, uh, PCI standard right. for, uh, the current existing standard, which is version 3.2.1 and the new standard, which is going to come next year, which is 4.0, is a is an overall change to the standard, and I think you will see a major changes coming, in, and I think you will see a lot of those requirements being right. being re uh, re rebuilt, and the the 12 requirements have been the same. Just to mm -hmm. it, it doesn't create confusion. 12 requirements same remain same, but the the sub requirements have been uh, been uh, changed in terms of keeping in mind 
because the the feedback that we have been getting on those specific areas you know which mm. includes one of them is the password the right. vulnerability management you know uh, how frequently you should be doing vulnerability assessments Absolutely. so you will see a lot of change you will see a lot of change which is going to uh, which is going to come by for the pcrs version 4.0 right. i think we need to keep little uh, we have we have to hold our breath for that to come in but yeah. uh, i don't want to uh, uh, to break the entire silence around that but i think my next year early next year first quarter you will see the pcrs version 4.0 coming into the picture awesome. and i think that's going to be a, a major shift and because there mm. are tra- transition timelines which is going to be Uh, given to the industry to adopt to the standards right. uh, and i think it, it has been developed in keeping in mind you know how we can uh, you know be flexible and, and you know and support for additional methodologies to right. achieve the uh, end goal which is security very nice when so i'm looking forward to that standard and for the audience it is not scripted right because i'm asking tough questions because these are no worry industry is is you know kind of questioning around so uh, let's see what standard 4 is going to come up with um yeah so so uh, 2006 the first standard came in right and it's been many years that pci is developing these standards and in india also when a uh, lot of digital transactions are happening new financial institutes are coming up what do you see from the adoption perspective right when you talk to the industry leaders and in the industry is the acceptance and adoptions is it is it going up is it helping organizations what what do you see and what do you hear Yeah, see, we we are already seeing, you know, because I think uh, we are already seeing some great steps being taken uh, mm-hmm. to address some of the most important issues in the payment card security in India. Mm-hmm. So, and I think industry collaboration, you know, collaboration both domestically and globally continues to hugely impact uh, uh, to help the tackle the growing threat uh, of cyber crime. And I think the important combination of sharing best practices through the uh, the PCISC uh, PO program and the global industry collaboration and enhancements to payment infrastructure. all continues to help the growth of the payment industry and combat the cyber crime in it and i think we are seeing great really steps i think the I, when i took the role uh, in 2018 end of october 2018 when i took up the role and i think we had just one participating organization oh. uh, in fact that organization also uh, uh, you know we, we just had one and i think uh, and then we now see today we have uh, close to 15 plus participating organization oh, in the country wow. with one affiliate member which is npci Mm-hmm. so the 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 growth level is increasing mm-hmm. and you can you, we can we can we can consider that the number of sss community has been growing mm-hmm. uh, we have we have been seeing a lot of demand in internal security sss which is issas mm-hmm. uh, in the country we have seen the pcips which is payment card professional training pcip training is is also seen a massive growth in terms of the professionals going up see uh, that's what i'm talking about training getting right. yourself trained educated aware on the pci standard is very very critical for uh, for uh, for the payment card industry stakeholders to secure the payment data there has been uh, been uh, been a really great support that we are seeing from the india and i think that's why the pci security standard council has india as one of the priority market okay okay sounds good sounds good so a uh, lot of people are taking training they are becoming part of pci council right you know that growth Correct. is coming up uh yeah. and and you speak in different forums i've seen your different presentations you drive the overall collaboration and knowledge around the industry uh so in yeah. past 3 years right since we have joined like in 2018 so in past 3 years what notable change you have seen that pci council has made in the industry Let, let's talk about that sure so i think before that just wanted to also highlight it that we are seeing some great in, uh, traction from the fintech community Oh, okay. we recently got couple of the fintechs boarded uh, onboarded as uh, as the pci participating organization which is a great sign that you know the fintech industry is also trying to uh, come forward mm-hmm. and uh, support the entire payment card industry uh, in terms of securing the payment data which is okay. great to see i think I, I, I if i'm allowed i can take a name it's cred i think cred is one of which, cred is a platform which everyone use right so yeah. so i think they are the one who got just recently voted and we are seeing lot of new uh, uh, you know banks you know the neo banks which are also seeing we are seeing the traction that they are also looking forward to coming and coming forward to join pci which is great to see from the indian market and i think uh, the you know talking about the the last 3 years journey and i think see we all have we all know that india is a very dynamic market and unique in how its technological innovation is driving the change in the payment landscape every 
day we get to hear something new and you know it just try to disrupt the entire payment ecosystem but however the the rising threat of cyber crime and data security breaches are an increasing concern as well in the country and i think we cannot ignore that right. and to address these concerns over the last 3 years we have raised awareness around the importance of payment data security and uh, the adoption of the pci security standards mm -hmm. we have also highlighted how the pci participating organizations or the participating organization program provides indian businesses with the opportunity to participate in the development of standards and alongside you know these are the some of them are the global companies mm -hmm. furthermore to help address the shortage of the trained cyber security professionals just we talked about it in india i think we have worked to increase the number of people who have right. received the uh, pci professional education and i think this training also provides the necessary tools to help organization build a secure environment secure payment environment as more security experts are trained on pci standards and resources india businesses indian businesses who are into the payment card industry will be in a better place to mitigate the impact of cyber absolutely absolutely so understanding is very much required you know until unless you are trained on this exactly. standard you understand it you can't implement it so uh, exactly as you know you have been on elite ciso forum before as well so we focus a lot on training and awareness and collaboration so maybe offline we will discuss how we can drive this even further you know how we can do yeah. more awareness more training around uh, pci security great absolutely now now one thing one thing i you know one specific question i wanted to ask was uh, so you know cyber attacks are happening right we are going digital lot of lot of attacks we have seen ransomware attack in particular is kind of going crazy all the organization or most of the organization are getting impacted with this so going forward right uh, you talk to different companies you have a global view what do you think the top 3 cyber attacks are going to come and what cios and ciso should be careful about what is your opinion on that ha huh, very interesting question i think uh, uh, the all uh, the the top 3 you know if i have to uh, spell out one is going to be definitely the online digital skimming we may have heard about mage card attacks right. you know previously i think this is one thing which we are seeing uh, which is one of the uh, most uh, you know impacting the industry social engineering the second and the third probably the ransomware mm -hmm. uh, i would have talked ransomware first but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know you know but i think these are the three uh, types of cyber attacks that have the potential to right. disrupt business operations hmm. and i think all if i have to go a little bit in more deep dive on the you know on on all these three talking about first about the online digital skimming i think it's is used to steal the personal data from the online payment forms you know probably for example email addresses passwords and credit card numbers mm -hmm. and uh, and and to prevent these attacks companies should adopt the appropriate data security standards and encourage employees to follow them talking about uh, the uh, the second one which is uh, social engineering i think it's the use of psychological manipulation to gain access to the systems or data relying on human trust and goodwill to perform successful attacks now in social engineering attacks fraud fraudsters will attempt uh, to persuade users to make security errors or say share the critical information often over the email i think that's to mitigate and in order to mitigate these risk of falling prey to these attacks individuals should ensure that they do not open emails and attachments from unknown or suspicious un uh, from the unknown or suspicious sources right and they should use multi factor authentication to make it more difficult for cyber criminals to access their accounts right finally right. most importantly which has been talked is the ransomware and i think mm -hmm. it's where the cyber criminals to they prevent a user from accessing the information by locking their computer or encrypting their files mm -hmm. until a ransom is paid right now how you can avoid that is maintaining six strong passwords and backing up with the business critical information here in such scenarios can help minimize the risk of a successful ransomware attack right now additionally individuals should also keep their systems up to date right and avoid downloading or installing anything from the unknown sources true true i think these three are the most critical and are going to disrupt your business big time so i think having the basic hygiene which we talked is starting of the video weak passwords updating your uh, systems uh, unpatched systems and insecure remote access right. having these three elements fixed and for me these are the three basic hygienes that someone uh, you know in the businesses uh, right. stakeholders start looking at it 
and if you are able to do this i think we are able to fight uh, we are able to fight with the with the with the criminals and, and i think we are able to protect our systems absolutely so the 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 two that you talked about the uh, uh, social engineering and ransomware i completely agree with you lot of people discuss about it it's a very well talked subject in the industry right how to protect from ransomware how to avoid social engineering but the digital skimming is not that much talked about right so when we talk about a a threat actor like magecart right british airways yeah. was impacted by magecart they put a script on that on on official website of british airways and then they uh, siphoned off millions of credit card mm-hmm. numbers right uh, i think people are not much aware about these kind of attacks so what is your recommendation i mean we talk about okay do application security do cross site scripting validation uh, verify where the scripts are being loaded any specific guidance around how do you protect around digital skimming yeah so i think see here the prime of it businesses should should invest in employee training mm-hmm. key is employee training people mm-hmm. train them mm-hmm. ensure that the security is ingrained in their company's culture mm-hmm. as well as their devices and keeping all company software hardware and tools up to date and patched can help mi- minimize the risk of falling victim to a cyber attack absolutely like digital absolutely i think this is this is simple short and sweet way of looking at it how you can protect absolutely. your system it, from yeah if i can add one thing i mean um, i'm a, i'm a hardcore practitioner from a security perspective so uh for your website security right your application security assessment your penetration testing on the website and ensuring from where the scripts are loading so like a uh, content security policies those maybe should be defined from on the website wherever you are accepting the credit card data right so those could be some of the additional things uh, in addition to what you what you shared with them great absolutely uh, i agree with you yeah uh, i'm looking at my watch it is going to be about 28 29 minutes oh. keep our podcast short uh, so i would like to yeah. ask this last question what do you see uh, coming in india in future from a pci council perspective digital payment perspective what future holds what, what do you see see interestingly i think immediately uh, the there are two things that we are currently working on one is which we just talked about the pci ds version 4.0 mm-hmm. and uh, the second most important development is the uh, is the development of the mobile standard so we are evolving our mobile security standard so quickly i will i will just uh, highlight about the pci ds uh, version 4 the road ahead for the pci console is 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 going to be very exciting journey for us for next year because with the pci ds version 4.0 getting rolled out there are going to be a lot of trainings awareness that we are going to do around in the industry and 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 one of most anticipated development in the payment card industry is the introduction of the pci dss 4.0 version which is going to aim on three aspects which just want to have first one is to ensure that the security standards continue to meet the security needs of the payment card industry one mm-hmm. add flexibility and support additional methodologies to achieve this security and the third is the promote security as a continuous process and enhance validation methods and procedures mm-hmm. so these are the three uh, aspects that the pci ds version 4.0 is going to aim at now um, with uh, having said that the second most important development is on the mobile uh, security standards development so so today uh, up until date you know we have two different pay- mobile payment security standards which is the pci software based pin entry on cards which is spoc standard mm-hmm. and the second is the pci contactless payments on cards which is cpoc standard mm-hmm. now Uh, these addresses the security for solutions that enables merchants to accept the contactless payments using a smartphone or any you know other commercially of the shelf mobile devices with nfc which is near field communication now the pci security council is currently working or developing on a new mobile standard that builds on existing spoc and cpoc standards and will be designed to support the future evolution of mobile payments now working title for this standard is going to be mobile payments on cards and uh, the mobile payment on cards will be a modular objective based security standard that will support various types of payment accepting channels and consumer ma- verification methods on card devices so the standard will support existing spoc and cpoc payment acceptance acceptance channels mm-hmm. as well as introduce new requirements to support the emerging and evolving payment acceptance practices and technologies so uh typically we are going to open it for rfc which is request for uh, comment and it, it is planned during the second half of 2021 mm-hmm. 
And uh, with the second RFC period planned in early 2022, the council, PCA council is targeting publication uh, around first half of 2022. This is tentative based on what kind of feedback that we are going to get. We, the standard is going to be out. And however, the completion of the standard, as just I said, you know, is completely dependent on how we get this feedback. And the schedule is go totally going to be dependent on on the RFCs. Right, right. So these are the two areas that PCI Security Standard Council has been working on. I think you'll see a lot of uh, uh, traction going forward in the in the marketplace. Perfect, perfect. Sounds good, sounds good. So I think uh, that's great that the new standard is going to come up. And then we will invite you again, you know, just to hear in terms of what has been the latest on the new standards that's going to come up. Uh, I think, I think it's, uh, we are just hitting the 30 minute mark over here. So thanks a lot, Nitin. Thanks sure. for taking out time and sharing your knowledge, your thought uh, with the industry. I'm sure uh, going forward, we will again have you, we'll host you and we'll hear more from your, uh, from your perspective. Great. Thanks a lot, Nitin. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas, for having me. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.